Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of All About the Cars of Gran Turismo 7. In this video we're going to learn all about the 2008 Fiat 500 1.2 8V Lounge SS. Now this car can be purchased in two ways on Gran Turismo 7. First you can purchase it here at the used car dealership for 12,900 credits. And the second way you can purchase it is at Brand Central under the Fiat dealership where we'll go after we're done here, and that will be for a slightly higher price. Now, if you aren't familiar with the used car dealer here at here on Gran Turismo 7, it rotates cars in and out of the dealership every day. So this car may or may not be available for you to purchase at the time that you watch this video, but it will eventually rotate back into being available for purchase again in the near future. So be sure to check back often to check for its availability. All right, so we're going to get started. I'll click on this car and we'll go over some of its specs. First, this car comes stock with 279.95 performance points. It has an FF drivetrain, meaning that the engine is situated at the front of the vehicle and the front wheels drive the car. The maximum stock power is 65 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. The weight is just over 2,200 pounds and the engine is naturally aspirated. Now we're going to click on learn more and see what Andy has to say about this car. Looking for an Italian compact? Then look no further than the Fiat 500. The design is based on that of the famed 1950s second generation model of the same name. The car utilizes a front engine front wheel drive layout what, that we refer to as FF. The Fiat 500's fire is one in a long line of inline four power plants that have been in use since the first Pandas. And, in case you were wondering, FIRE stands for Fully Integrated Robotized Engine. It handles well for a compact FF sedan, and its engine note is pleasing to the ear. Alright, that's everything we can learn from the used car dealer, so we're going to back out to the main menu now, and go next door to Brand Central. And from here, we're going to go to Europe, down to Italy, and to the Fiat dealership. Then we'll go to their showroom, and this is the only car that's available at the Fiat dealership. So we've already gone over all of the specs, but I do want to point out that this car's price is more expensive here at the uh, Brand Central than it is at the used car dealer at 17,000 credits. But one of the cool things about buying the car at Brand Central over the used car dealer is that you get to choose the color of the car. So if you click on it, there are three colors to choose from for this car from the dealer, and that is red, white, and blue. So you'll choose one of those colors, back out to the previous menu, and click on Purchase to buy the car in that color. Now we're going to click on Learn More and see what Martin has to say about this car. This third-generation Fiat 500 was the quintessential Italian compact car. Not only did it inherit its design from the popular second-generation model, like its predecessor, it was a tremendous success, selling in huge numbers all over the world. It had a 69-horsepower, 1.2-liter engine that delivered adequate power. The 500 also handled surprisingly well, making it fun to drive. All right, that's everything we can learn from Brand Central, so we're going to back out to the main menu once again. And we're going to go down to the garage where I'll get into this car and we'll learn some more about it. So here at the garage, I'm going to click on Change Car. We have to scroll down to F for Fiat. And a little too far. Where are we? Oh, I'm sorry. My alphabet's all screwed up in my head. Okay, so I'm going to click on this car. We'll listen to the startup sound and then we'll learn some more about it. Alright, we're going to click on Car Collection, go to this vehicle, and we'll learn some more by reading this short description about it. The Italian version of the People's Car makes a comeback after a 50-year hiatus. Between 1957 and 1977, the second-generation Fiat 500 sold an amazing 4 million units, thanks to its extremely low price and attractive styling. The sales volume of the car was so significant that it put more Italians behind the wheel than any other car in history. 
50 years after the first model made its debut, the 500 is still characterized by the original model's tiny round headlights and shapely silhouette. This third generation model first appeared at the 2004 Geneva Motor Show and inherited many of the mechanical components from the Panda, Fiat's popular compact family hauler. However, it was the car's quirky styling that made the world notice the new 500. As soon as it reached dealerships in Europe, the 500 was in high demand. It became so popular that there were back orders in most markets around the globe, even after two years on the market. Power for this small FF front-engine front-drive compact came in the form of either a 1.2 or 1.4 liter gasoline engine or a 1.3 liter diesel engine. In Japan, the gasoline engines were the only versions sold, but they came with a dual-logic two-pedal manual transmission. The 1.2 liter produced a scant 68 horsepower and 75.2 foot-pound of torque. With a lightweight body weighing only 2,227 pounds, even with the luxury grade lounge model, and a stiff chassis, the 500 was actually fairly athletic despite the engine's low output. So lots of great information from Gran Turismo's description about this car. Now we're going to back out to the main menu once again and go next door to the cafe and we'll see if anybody's here to talk to us about this car. And we have one person, and that's Freeman Thomas, so we'll see what he has to say. I love the 2008 Fiat 500. It's whimsical and fun. It does a masterful job of updating the original icon. Creating character and vehicle design is difficult to do successfully and well. But here's an example that inspires. It also lends itself well to customizing and special versions. The face is friendly with its round eyes. You could see a parking lot full of them, all in the same color, and yet they all look, or they all don't look alike. Color plays a huge emotional role with the 500. It's a retro design, and of course, retro colors work well with it. All right, that's everything we can learn about this car, but we're going to make one final stop down at the tuning shop, where I'll show you everything that can be done to improve this car's performance and power. So here at the tuning shop, I have not done anything to this car to upgrade it in any way, but I will show you everything that can be done to it. Under the sports category, everything here is available for purchase. Under club sports, same thing. Everything on this page is also available to be added to this Fiat. Under semi-racing, you cannot add a supercharger or sports intercooler, but everything else on this page is fair game, including the low, medium, and high RPM turbochargers. And under the racing category, you cannot add an anti-lag system, a supercharger, a torque vectoring center differential, the fourth stage of weight reduction, or the active LSD controller, but everything else on this page, which is still a considerable amount, is available for purchase, including the racing intercooler, and can be added to this car. So lots that you can do to improve this car's performance and power. That's everything we can learn about this car from Gran Turismo 7. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it helps you to determine whether or not you'd like to add this car to your collection. Stay tuned for more videos highlighting all of the cars of Gran Turismo 7. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.